Hi everybody, Tammy here, and today I wanted to dig into Google Earth, the Google Earth application. I'll be using the web-based, but if you're on some kind of device, um, Android or iOS, you can download the app for Google Earth and use it um, in pretty much the same way. So I am again on a PC a laptop right now. So when you go to google.com slash earth, you're going to need to go to the button that says launch earth. It is a web-based app. So um, you want to see these tools on the left side. Now, I just made a video over this and it was just way too long. So I'm going to try to speed it up and then let you do all the exploring. So I'm going to kind of go over some of the highlights. So really, what I love about Google Earth is that a lot of our students here in Wills Point, Texas have not left this general area. And so we want to open up literally the world to them. And so Google Earth allows them to explore places all over the world and see how people live and see uh, what the geography looks like um, and just learn some really cool facts about those locations. So. Um, we have several tools over here on the left and you've got your main menu bar that goes into your settings and to some of your projects, which I will go over here in just a second. But I want to just um, go over a few other things. One of my favorite things is if I were teaching um, kids today, I would be doing this. I'm feeling lucky rolling the dice. When you click on that, it's just going to take you to a random place every time you click on it and give you some facts about it and maybe some pictures along the way. So I'm feeling lucky and we're going to Mount Fish in the Caucasus Mountains in Russia. And so you are able to click on here. I'm able to go to different pictures. Um, and most of these pictures are coming from tourists that went to that place and submitted to Google Maps. So um, you are able to kind of maneuver around. You can zoom out, zoom in, hold down the shift key if you're using a mouse, hold down the shift key, and then you will also be able to change perspective. Um, change your horizon and kind of turn it around um, from a different view. Um, so I'm going to X out of that right now, but I want to show you this, these little tools down here in the lower right. Um, I can go to 2D and that will just be an aerial view looking down, but that 3D just adds a really cool different perspective. And again, use that shift key to be able to move around and change your horizon and perspective. And, and while I'm on these tools right here, the other one that we would be using is the street view. Um, and when you click on that, anything that you see in blue is going to be available to show you street view. So we'll look at that also. But again, I'm just going to roll the dice again and see where it takes me um, to Illinois, Plainfield, Illinois. Um, and so it's going to have some information. Um, from Wikipedia here and you are able to zoom in and you are able to go to Street View and you can look at the 3D of Plainfield and then again roll the dice. So every day I would go somewhere new and especially if you have one of the interactive flat panels in your classroom, um, it would be very cool to be using that app um, which you'll need to download from the Play Store. Um, for the panels and be able to maneuver um, by touch. This is Mount Tamboro, Tambora in um, northeastern part. This is in Indonesia. Probably, yeah, it's got to be some kind of volcano. Um, so it will, um, it's a stratovolcano. There you go. So very cool information. Just a random pick and it helps kind of build up that curiosity that we love for our students to have. Um, you can also just do a search for some place and I've been searching many, many places here. Um, I can search for the Statue of Liberty and it will take me straight there to New York City. And I like, I like that aspect of how it kind of zooms out and it'll go across the world to where we, um, where we're wanting to look. And it's going to kind of turn around slowly until you click and stop. Um, and again, I, you can use the shift key and kind of turn around. Um, I think it's cool for them to see um, some of the other places nearby and to see the skyline in New York and just kind of get that perspective. Um, 
here we've got Ellis Island over here. It's just some really cool ways to explore um, the things that um, are interesting for our students. So just using the search button. And then there's this little tool called the Voyager tool. And it's got some different categories here that I just encourage you to explore nature. I like the games. Um, I was doing the animal calls games um, earlier and I didn't do great. I got six out of nine, but it was fun to do a little quiz and to play some sounds of animals. Um, that would be great to do with the kids. Quiz on U.S. presidents. Um, I did the Global National Parks. Just so cool to be able to show more of the world to our students. Um, and so that's in the Voyager. And, and again, um, up at the top here in these different categories, you've got um, several categories to just explore. And you've got some on education. And I think there's something in here for every subject area that would be interesting. So just dig into some of these with your students or allow them to explore Google Earth in some of these and see what um, maybe is interesting to them. And then maybe they could do a little project and um, present to the class. So that's in the Voyager tool. And then we've already talked about the I'm feeling lucky rolling the dice there. Um, and projects is the main thing I want to talk about. You can access projects here or up here in the menu. Um, area, but I'm just going to click on this for projects. I'm going to move me out of the way. Um, you can open one that's from your Google Drive. So if you create a project, you can choose to save it in Google Drive and it will have um, automatically create a folder for Google Earth and hold your projects in there. Or you can create a KML file um, that's just a separate file. So I'm going to create and I'm going to create it in Google Drive. And so when I'm um, finished with it, it will automatically save um, to my Google Drive in a folder called Google Earth. And I'm going to title my project. Um, so I'm envisioning our students creating these projects and then they're going to add a description. And this will be the overall description of the project. And I think that if you see this project as like a slideshow and each slide is its own voyage, its own exploration of a location, I think that's a great way to put it. Um, so what we'll do is we'll start with a new feature and there's several ways I can add a new feature. So I'm going to search to add a place and I'm going to um, I'm going to do Yellowstone. So I'm just going to do Old Faithful. I was looking at this earlier. So I'm going to look up Old Faithful and I'm going to get out of the way because I do not need to be in here. All right. So it's going to take me to Old Faithful and I'm going to add it to, pro to my project. So I'm going to add it to my new project today. That's the one I've got. I'm going to save. Actually, I want to edit it. I should have just, I wanted to edit it that way. In this individual, um, part of my presentation for Old Faithful, I can replace the information that if you saw, um, if I clicked on Old Faithful, I see this little pop up right here. But if I have it in my project, I can change that information and I can replace that with my own description, with my own images. So when I was there at Old Faithful, I took lots of pictures. I can put the pictures I took instead of pictures somebody else took. I can also input or insert videos into this particular um, slide. So I can replace that and I would put my pictures here or I would put my videos here or a YouTube video. Um, I can put a better description in here if, if I want to, and then I can say what kind of box. I'm just going to have the small info box that pops up. So when you come to that slide in my slideshow or in my project here, then you're going to see that pop up. And I also want you to see a cool view of it. So I this is kind of looking down on it. I'm going to go to 3D. So I'm going to do a 3D view. And what I liked the most about my time there was um, the geysers up here above Old Faithful. So I want you to see that part. And so I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. And I'm going to use the shift key to kind of turn it around a little bit. 
And then that's what I want you to see when you come here. So I'm going to click on this capture this view and it's going to pop up and say it's saving. So when you come to Old Faithful on my project, this is the first view. Now you from here can do anything you want to. You can still move around. You can still explore on your own. But that's going to be your starting point in that view that I wanted. And you can also change the icons for um, the place markers, and you can also change the colors. So um, you have a lot of options here um, when you are creating all of your little locations along the way. So now I have one, I'm gonna do another one. I'm gonna do a search for the um, Grand Prismatic Spring, and that's not too far away from Old Faithful, so a little bit farther north in the park. And notice I just did a search for it and I can uh, have the option here to add to the project. So I'm gonna add it to my project, to this project. I'm gonna edit it first. I'm gonna put in the pictures. I'm gonna replace the, what was already there. And I'm gonna put in my pictures and my description and change my little icons and then I'm good to go. And so now I have a couple of things and you can just keep adding on to it and it will automatically save, which is awesome. Um, so, I'm going to click on this and I'm going to present it. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. So when you hit present, then you have your little slides. And so this is the first slide. Remember, this is the view that I captured. Now I did replace the information, but I didn't really replace it with anything. So that would pop up right there. And then I can go to the next one after I've looked around and then this will take me to the Grand Prismatic Spring. Um, that was my second location. But again, I can still move around. I can still do everything um, that Google Earth offers and really explore what you were trying to, um, to tell me about. So that's the projects. Very, very cool. I'm, I'm excited for the students to be able to um, get into those projects. And I wanted to do a quick jump in here after the fact. Um, I wanted to also include the feature of adding a full screen slide in the middle of your presentation. So it doesn't have to be just places on here. If I want to just put something in this presentation um, that is just a full screen infor information slide, then you would just add that and you would add that information here. You could put your title here and you could put some kind of background. Say I wanted to do a Google image search on Yellowstone and I wanted to just include that picture and then just type out Yellowstone is one of the most beautiful, blah, blah, blah. So you can insert um, kind of blank slides in the middle of this presentation um, if you just want to put information. So I just wanted to make sure that was included as well. So that's either here again or in the top menu. We have map style. I usually stay in the exploration. You have these different options, but I like to stay in the exploration map style. And I think that I covered everything except for measuring. I'm going to go back to, let's go back to Wills Point, Texas. And it's going to take me down south of Texas and take me to Wills Point. And I want to say how long um, or how, what's the distance between Wills Point and Dallas. So I'm going to, um, all right, or maybe we just go from Wills Point to Terrell. So let's have a starting point. I'm going to click the measurement tool and it's going to start here. Then I'm going to go to Terrell and then it's going to pop up that it was 15.93 miles. I can change those units of measurement, which is great. Now it's going to keep going until I'm clicked done or turn this off over here. So if I want to explore area of something, then I can click and join them all together and it's going to create this shape. And as soon as I did that, then I get perimeter of this triangle here and the area as well. So I can change the units here with the perimeter and I can change the units here with area. But how cool as a former math teacher to be able to explore our units of measure and to see why one is squared and one is not. 
um, I love that information as well. So we can start new and I can just click it off and I'm done. Um, so just some a whole bunch of tools here. I love the things that are already built in. Your random, every time I roll, I'm going to go somewhere new and learn about it. Voyager, where you can play some games and learn about different places and have some cool um, little lesson plans even for every subject area. Um, so some great information, especially with the projects. I love the projects and the students able to create those projects with their own information, with their own data, their own pictures and videos and their own descriptors. And they can um, share that with the teacher or their peers and present them in class. And especially if we've got those interactive panels that would be really cool too so what a great way to explore our world and allow our students to explore on their own as well with this web-based app so have fun exploring let me know how you use it in your classroom and i hope you have a great day